Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Finding Your Pelvic Floor. Uh, I'm Melinda Wilson. I'm a physio and owner of Emerge Physiotherapy. Um, and I've had lots of requests, um, especially from some local moms groups about uh, posting some videos on pelvic floor exercises. So um, what I thought would be great for today would be just trying to find the pelvic floor since there isn't really one exercise that's one size fits all for all pelvic floors. I do think it's worthwhile for anybody who's interested to just see if they can find that pelvic floor and figure out what it's doing at any given time. Uh, because honestly, um, I see uh, a lot of uh, varied capabilities of people coming in to see me at the clinic, but um, it either seems to be difficulty finding the pelvic floor or a pelvic floor that's kind of tense and stuck in one position um, with difficulty kind of letting go or uh, moving the muscles. So I thought we would try to figure that out today. So um, I'm going to use a ball, getting myself uh, comfy on my friend here. Um, if you have a ball at home, fantastic, uh, get comfy on your ball. Um, and if you have a BOSU ball, that will work. Um, or if not, a chair is great too. Because what we really want to do is feel um, the th some three points of contact. So we want to feel uh, your sit bones on either side, as well as the perineum. So that bit of skin between the vaginal opening and anal opening. Um, and so when you can feel those three points of contact, uh, we know that we're probably going to have a better chance of feeling what the pelvic floor is doing at any given moment. Um, so uh, when we're sitting on a ball, that nice rounded top kind of pushes up into that perineum and does make it sometimes a little easier to, to feel what you're doing. Um, so we want to be in a nice kind of neutral posture. And by neutral, I mean uh, nothing too extended, nothing too flex. So uh, you really want to have your ears stacked over your shoulder, shoulders stacked over the hip. We don't want to have a super extended uh, trunk, which I see a lot, or uh, super flexed and kind of rolling forward on the ball, not super helpful either. So we just want to have a nice neutral kind of stacked feel to things. You shouldn't feel like you're straining to stay in this position. Fiddle around with it as much as you need to, kind of rolling back and forth, but really make sure that you can feel those three points of contact, the two sit bones and your pelvic floor. Okay, so let's put your one hand on your abdomen and the other hand on your ribs, shoulders nice and quiet. We don't want your shoulders to be all tight up by your ears. And the purpose of this is so that you can direct your breath right into your hands. So really deep breath right into your nose, and out through your mouth. And through the nose. And out through the mouth. Good. And you really want to feel your front hand expand and your side hand expand as well. Inhale. And exhale. Good. So now draw your attention to that pelvic floor or the perineum is probably the best place to be paying attention to. The perineum, again, that bit of skin between the vaginal opening and anal opening. For any males watching, the skin between the testicles and the anal opening that you wanna have feeling on the ball there. So really seeing just what happens on an inhale and what happens on an exhale. On an inhale, what ideally you should feel is the perineum pressing down into the ball or increasing contact with the ball. And that's because your lungs are expanding when you inhale. They really do expand way, way, way down into the abdomen and push down your intestines and abdominal contents down into your pelvic floor, which causes it to lower and press into the ball, okay? And on the exhale, you should just feel a little less contact with the ball. Nothing fancy, just a little less pressure. And that's because when you exhale, your lungs are pushing air up out of your airway and therefore reducing the pressure down on your abdominal contents. So it's easier for your pelvic floor to just kind of lift up this way because there's nobody pushing it down. So just draw your attention to that. Really inhale in. And exhale out. It's going to be easier for some of you than others. If you have a lot of tension in your pelvic floor, it may be very difficult for you to feel that downward pressure um, in through the pelvic floor. 
So now let's try making it a little bit more challenging now that you've got this nice comfortable breath going. On the exhale, see if you can just lift up a little bit more through that pelvic floor. Think about that perineum lifting up towards your head, especially the male population lifting it up towards your head. Women, you can think about that vaginal opening closing down on something. I like to think of like a mechanical claw uh, coming down over a big pile of ping pong balls and just grasping one and exhale, lifting that ping pong ball up. Good. And inhale and relaxing back down. Grasping another ball and lifting up. Nice. So the idea there is to make sure, keep going, is to make sure that you're not clenching your abdomen, you're not clenching your adductors, you're not clenching your bum or your back or anything like that, which is something I see so very often. We really wanna have the rest of the body be still, not totally floppy, but in control. And you're just focusing very specifically on that perineum, lifting up towards your head and falling as you inhale. Exhale and inhale. Good, so those are muscles that should be active when you're exercising, when you're trying to stop yourself from going to the washroom, um, any time where you really need support. Um, but they're not muscles that we want to be working all the time. So that's why we're also going to work on letting go of those muscles. So what you just did were Kegels or kind of a, a more targeted Kegel. Now we're going to try seeing if we can try some reverse Kegels. So letting go through that pelvic floor. So really thinking about where we start and stop with the pelvic floor. So I'm going to turn sideways again. We have to think about that pubic bone in the front, that bony prominence at the front of your pelvis, the tailbone on the back side of you, and really picturing a like a hammock of muscle going from your pubic bone in the front to your tailbone in the back, or it's almost like the bottom of a basket there as well, or a bottom of a bowl. What we want to try to do is think of your pubic bone and tailbone lengthening or getting further apart from one another. So we're gonna do that on the inhale phase of breath because we already talked about that. We talked about how the lungs are expanding and pushing down into the pelvic floor. So we really wanna think about that pubic bone and tailbone getting further apart and the muscles coming down into the ball. So I'm gonna face away and we're thinking in our nice neutral positioning. I'm gonna inhale and exhale. Inhale, pubic bone and tailbone. Get further apart. Exhale, allow them to come back together. The movement is very small. I'm just exaggerating for teaching purposes. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale really softening and letting go through those muscles and exhale. Good. And we're going to go in one more direction. So you have to be thinking about now your sit bones. Really, again, with the breath, we're really inhaling deep into those lungs. But now let's think about your sit bones separating as well. So we've got muscles that go kind of sit bone to sit bone and through that perineum. So we really want to try to let it lengthen. Okay, so Again, in our nice neutral posture, inhale in, sit bones widen, and exhale. Inhale in, sit bones widen, they're floating apart, and exhale. Really focus on your tissues just settling down into the ball. Inhale, and exhale. Good. So these exercises are best for times when we want our muscles to be letting go when you're practicing them, right? So if you're sitting on the toilet, you're uh, urinating or having a bowel movement, see if you can focus on letting go as much as you can. Really target it towards the front when you're having a, um, a void. When you're having a bowel movement, see if you can let go a little bit more towards the back. It should, it should never really be forced. If you like yoga, 
doing the more quiet poses, child's pose, things like that are a great time to be trying that breath, really letting go on the inhale phase of breath. Um, and certainly anytime you're kind of cooling down after exercise, especially if you have a lot of hip and back issues, really learning to let go through that pelvic floor is a great way to also help you reduce tension in the back and hips, which tend to kind of go along with the tense pelvic floor. So, so there you go. That's sort of the introduction to finding that pelvic floor, getting a sense of it again, um, especially after surgery or having a baby or any kind of trauma through that area. Um, we tend to lose connection with that pelvic floor and what it's doing at any given time. Or maybe for some of you, it's just a body part you haven't really had to think about uh, to this point in your life. And all of a sudden it's become an issue. Um, so really getting that connection between brain and body is essential before you move on to more challenging exercises. Great. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to hear from you about whether uh, this made sense, whether you were able to do it, whether you want to try something more challenging. Uh, toss some comments below um, and let me know. Good luck.